Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I will be ranking the games in the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Now, I'll only be ranking the main games, so no spin-offs or compilation games here. Also, I know that you'll disagree with my decisions, so feel free to leave your comments below. Now, on with the list. This is my favorite game by far mainly because I like what I did with the gameplay, story, and characters. In terms of gameplay, it improves greatly upon the first one, optimizing the features from the first game, as well as adding new ones, such as being able to turn into a lion, adding new forms to Sora, all of which alter how you play the game, and adding some quick time events. Either that's good or bad, it's up to you. The characters grow a great deal during the game as well. Sora is finally able to find his friends and complete his quest. Riku forgives himself and lets go of the darkness in his heart. And Kairi finally gets to do something. Even get her own Keyblade. Would you look at that? Even some side characters get to do something, including, but not limited to, Leon, Cloud, and Mickey Mouse. Now, I won't talk about the story because I don't want to spoil it, but know that it is worth experiencing for yourself. I'll instead list all the new worlds you get to visit, such as Milan, Tron, Lion King, Pirates of the Caribbean, and many many more. Overall, it's a great game with lots of features and gameplay styles, and is well worth your time. If someone told you that they created a game with characters and settings from a turn-based RPG combined with Disney, you would think that they were insane. Well, Kingdom Hearts is one such game, and the most surprising thing about it, it's actually really good. And I wasn't lying, you meet characters from Final Fantasy 7 and 8 during the game, and even your protagonist could be, a, you know, a protagonist in a JRPG. Your main character Sora is later joined by Donald Duck and Goofy and together they travel to other Disney worlds and shoot lasers at keyholes or something. The worlds you can visit include Tarzan, Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland, Aladdin and a plethora of others. The best way that I can describe this game is that it's a platformer slash action RPG and it plays a lot differently from your typical Final Fantasy. The gameplay does take a bit of time to get used to, especially the platforming, but it's very easy to learn. The story itself is very simple. It basically comes down to rescue the princess and save the world, but don't let that fool you because it will take you for a ride. Before I start with this entry, I must clarify something. This game comes directly after Kingdom Hearts 1. So for those of you who didn't know, the chronological order is Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, then 2. The premise of this game is that Sora was napping in the field one day, and this guy in a hood shows up and says, go to this castle, and Sora is just like, dope. And when he goes to the castle, a whole bunch of other shit goes down. You get to play as two different characters in this game, Sora and Riku. Sora's main goal is, is to rescue this chick called Namine, and Riku's goal is just to kill a whole bunch of people. They differ so much, it's like having a light and dark campaign in a Game Boy Advance game. Now I come to the part where the game will either make or break you the gameplay you see unlike the other Kingdom Hearts games Chain of Memories uses a card system meaning that you have to use a card for every action you take whether it be attack magic or recovery it all requires cards and at first I was put off by this but the more you play the more fun it becomes because eventually you can combine cards devastating attacks and spells and so on honestly for a Game Boy Advance game 
I'd say they did pretty good. This game is actually a prequel to the whole Kingdom Hearts franchise, boasting a roster of all new characters. The characters you play as are Terra, Ventus, and Aqua, and each of them have their own stories, so I can't really go get into that aspect. Just know that it does connect to Kingdom Hearts 3, so I would play it if I were you. Throughout all of the Kingdom Hearts games, I think this gameplay style that's in this game is my favorite, mainly because of its simplicity. Suppose you have a fire spell. Well, you have to level it up. And if you pair it up with another fire spell, you'll get Fyra. And this goes for all your spells and eventually you can mix and match them creating devastating results. This game isn't perfect, however, since, in my opinion at least, this is mostly Terra's story. Since he gets the most development and his story is the most straightforward of the three. Ventus just wants some friends and is merely along for the ride. And Aqua is basically useless until the very end. Don't let that discourage you from playing it though, because it still is a very well-made game, despite its limitations and the fact that it was made on PSB hardware. This game is a bit of a side story, meaning that it doesn't progress the overall plot and instead focuses on piecing together events that happened between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. The game focuses on Roxas and Organization 13, the bad guys of the series, and how they manipulate the events that occur before Kingdom Hearts 2. It does show what the organization does in its day-to-day -day lives and it's kind of cool getting to play as the bad guy in the series. Although the game predominantly features Roxas, you do get to know and understand the other characters better. Mostly Axel though. To be honest, this game is mostly filler. You do get to spend more time with the bad guys, but who really cares? The biggest problem with this game, for me, is actually the gameplay. When probably the most important part of any game. Although the formula stays mostly the same as in the other games, there are some changes that don't do so well. The first is the leveling system. Instead of just leveling up as you do in the other games, you get chips instead, which you have to put on a graph and it is very clumsily done. And the second is that the game is mission based and is very repetitive. You have no idea. Honestly, I wouldn't play this if I were you. Just watch the compilation if you're curious what happens. The premise to this game is the most ridiculous thing ever. So basically, Mickey Mouse was watching porn on his computer, right? And then he's like, oh shit, Minnie's gonna find out. So he gets sorry, he's like, hey, sorry, go fix it. And then Sora's just like, K. And then he trons inside the computer and has to fight viruses or some shit. What kind of premise is that for a game? What the hell is going on? As you can probably tell, I don't really like the story in this game. Mainly because it's stupid and serves no purpose. It only has like a small connection at the very end and that's it. This game is fun, however, playing mainly as it did in the first Kingdom Hearts. It does have some unconventional play styles in it as well, such as a traditional turn-based RPG level, a side-scrolling level, and a shooting level, so you won't be bored very often when playing. It won't matter, however, when you realize that this game serves no purpose and doesn't connect to the other games. 
There is no growth or progression and nothing of substance in this game at all. Honestly, you're better off skipping this one and only get it if you want to play all of the games for the completion's sake. I hate this game! Now, before I get into why I don't like it, let me first say what I did like. I like the fact that you can play as Riku in this game. I like the dashy mechanic and I like some of the worlds you visit. Mostly Hunchback of Notre Dame, Tron and Fantasia. Now it's time for things I didn't like. First, the game is hella big for the wrong reasons. Mainly that you get a gigantic ass area to play around with, but there isn't shit to do. Second, instead of having party members like Donald and Goofy, the game instead decides that it wants you to play Tamagotchi. If, for those of you who weren't born in the 90s and don't know what that is, basically, you gotta take care of animals and shit. Basically, what you do is you have to capture or find these monsters and raise them so that it could become your party members. And I swear I was doing this more than actually playing the main game. And if you couldn't gather it from my tone, I think this is incredibly stupid. The third and probably the worst is the story. The reason I hate the story is because they added time travel into the mix. Like the Kingdom Hearts story wasn't confusing enough. Seriously, I had to visit like five different websites to explain what the hell actually happened. I would recommend you play this game if you're going to play Kingdom Hearts 3. If you aren't, stay the hell away from it. So that's my list ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed it and please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that nonsense and I'll see you next time, bye.